I didn't put on makeup for nothing, and I already tried to make a video twice today. The one time I was getting ready to make a video, then Mom came home, and we went on a walk, so there was that. And then the second time I tried to make a video, it would just disconnect and disconnect and disconnect. Maybe I tried to make one three times. And so at this point, I'm just going to make a quick video. So far, well, just a couple of things I want to cover, and I might as well write it on a sticky note or just a notepad note while I'm doing this. So the first thing I want to cover is, hang on, what am I? Believe okay, you know what, I tried to script these things, I should have scripted it beforehand, and as I said, I hate to script things anyway, so I'm just going to go with what I was going to go with before. The first thing I want to go with is, I saw a lot of, well, let me, let me start with this. I realized that in order to be going anywhere in society, I'm going to have to get famous. I don't have a choice. I don't have, it's like that great Gatsby quote. Whenever you feel like criticizing anybody, just remember that all the people in this world don't have the privileges that you have. And I'm one of the ones who's kind of disadvantaged because I'm disabled. By the way, um, shout out to, no offense, and I know I'm going to get in trouble for this, but shout out to some certain people at Chapel Gate Presbyterian Church because thank you, you taught me what it's like for me to be even in certain churches. If I'm disabled... If I'm Jewish, if I'm from a divorced home, and if I otherwise don't fit the mold, then I'm not going to be accepted. So thank you for teaching me that I'm going to be a pariah even among churches, even among believers, or so-called believers, even among where the outcasts are supposed to be accepted but are not. So I just wanted to get that out of the way and... It's like that meme says on Facebook, every time that I, well, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of reversing it or kind of doing the converse, but every time I have a flashback about a certain incident, I get mad about it all over again. And, and for good reason, even, and speaking of being Jewish, I got an anti-Semitic comment recently on one of my soda head holes. Because someone, I had asked, was my natural look better or was my look with makeup better? And she said something about my nose. And so I said, it's because my nose is too Jewish, isn't it? And she never responded. So I knew right away that she was playing the anti-Semitic card. And now I get why Dan, well, I've gotten a lot of times why Dan and Popov have not wanted to say that they're Jewish. But it doesn't mean that I'm not proud to be Jewish. And the only thing that is going to make... Let me, let me put it this way. The only thing that is going to make being Jewish seem like a liability is if we let the anti-Semites get to us. If we let the anti-Semites make us ashamed to be Jewish or to let the anti-Semites anti affect us to think that there's something wrong with being Jewish. And I was having a conversation about that with my mom today because I fell out with a cousin who said, or excuse me, I fell out with a cousin when I said that our branch, of the, that our family was probably Jewish and that I detested the family secrecy. And she said, well, it's because I'm paraphrasing and summarizing her words and kind of going on things that she says, that she said before in his vein. But she said, like, well, it's because, you know, you talk about so much and people don't want to hear about it and this and this and this. And I could refer you to Jeremiah 2, Romans Romans 9 to 11, but I always hate saying 9 to 11. I prefer 9 to 12, especially because 9 to 11 was such a, I mean, you can't even describe 9 to 11 because, first of all, it's obviously an anti-Semitic event. If you read the, the part in the 9 to 11 commission report where I think it was Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. He said he wanted and Osama bin Laden. They wanted to go after quote unquote Jews and Crusaders. And one of the one of the mullahs or whoever he was wanted something different. And also, speaking of 9/11, every time they read the Declaration of Independence on the Super Bowl days. I mean, reading the Declaration of Independence, it's nice to commemorate the 9-11 victims, 
But the thing I think I tear up most at is the singing of the national anthem. But one of the things I think they need to do too, I mean, I let me just say this too, I broke down at the national anthem. I was even crying when they played America the Beautiful with the piano on one of the commercials, and then I even cried at the commercials because I've been thinking about the America the Beautiful, or it, it might have. It might have been the National Anthem, but I was thinking initially it was America the Beautiful, and then when they, by the way, excuse the burp there, it was a burp, that's why I was quiet for a minute, when they did the, and my, uh, my ADD's kicking in for some reason, there you go, when they did the National Anthem, oh, that's what I wanted to say, when they did the National Anthem, I broke down, but I think, too, that when they do the Declaration of Independence and when they do the National Anthem, they should also, especially like right this year, because February were second Groundhog Day, and just looking at a calendar here, I'm doing my counting. So, literally, okay, so literally six days, if I'm counting correctly, I'm not the biggest mathematician in the world. So, six days before the Super Bowl, Holocaust Remembrance Day happened, and I think that they should have also done, and since it falls, the Super Bowl always falls around that time anyway, they should do um, Shalom Katz's version of El Malay Rakamim, and other people have said that Shalom Katz's version is the best version, and I definitely agree because others have said this as far as I recall, that he really, you know, was able to feel like he really was able to get out the emotion that needed to be got out, especially in his first version when he he recorded it with the chorus in the background, and that was because, as far as I know, he was getting it out for the first time and really feeling what he was feeling and saying, hey, this happened, I lived through it, and you could just tell that he was on the verge of crying, and understandably so, and so many things going on right now, and also I think that's part of the reason, too, that I get so angry at my family sometimes. Again, I'm referring to Jeremiah 2 and Romans 10, and particularly verses like Romans, Romans, well, okay, Roman, the, the passages from Romans 9 to Romans 11, and then Jeremiah 2, 11, and just so many other verses, and I think, too, in thinking about just so much, and I, I could talk about this a lot, but how many minutes have I bored you for already? Let me see here. So, seven minutes? Oh, eight minutes now. It just changed over, and I could talk about this a lot. I could. I, you know, I'm worried, too, that it's probably going to disconnect, but the point is, I think that we need to commemorate Holocaust Remembrance Day, too, around the time of the Super Bowl, especially since, especially since we're going to read the Declaration of Independence to remember 9-11 victims. We need to do El Malay Rakamim in order to remember Holocaust victims. And because 9-11 was also mostly an anti-Semitic attack, and it's because the U.S. supported Israel, and we need to remember that many, unfortunately, what the terrorists wanted happened, and many... Jewish people were murdered on 9-11, and, and America, instead of doing the right thing, we're, 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 we're cowering in the face of, we're cowering in the face of people who do not respect Israel's glory, and we are not standing with Israel, and we're doing, frankly, what my family did during the Holocaust, which was cowering away from supporting Israel in her time of need, and also that's why I get angry at my family, because, for lack of a better term, if crap hits the fan again, I'm afraid that we're going to repeat the mistakes that great Graham made us, and great great granddad Rusnock made, and people get mad at me for saying this, but I'm sorry, when you look at that picture, great great granddad Rusnock, for lack of a better term, and I hate to say this by my own relative, but he frankly got what he deserved, especially given that there were children involved in what happened. And one of those children happened to be his granddaughter Mary Ann's age at the time. And I'm just afraid that we're going to incur the same kind of wrath, the same kind of judgment that 
great-great-granddad and cure it, if nothing else. That wouldn't be a strong enough motivation, because we do have relatives over there. That wouldn't be a strong motivation enough to stand with Israel and help Israel, at least within my family. I don't know what would be. And now some people are going to say, well, she doesn't speak for the family and all that. I didn't say I would speak for the family, but I would hope my family would do better than repeat great grandma Gatus's and great great granddad Russ Knox mistakes. And I would hope we would be among the families of Israel who would stand for Israel and ask America to do the same, especially since part of the reason that America has been so blessed is because America stood with Israel and America was, frankly, one of the nations that our crypto Jewish relatives came to. And probably the one that most of our crypto Jewish relatives came to. And, well, that's that. And speaking of family, I just got a document from one of my cousins in in Poland. Apparently, it is the marriage certificate of my great, great, great grandparents. I don't know if it really is. I don't know. It could be may not be the marriage certificate, or maybe the marriage certificate. I don't know yet, but I have to find out, and I have to... By the way, I'm getting distracted, because admittedly I'm looking on something at BuzzFeed. It says, 35 signs that you're raised by a Jewish mother, and, I mean, could that be a sign? And I did say that, um, you know, definitely in some ways mom's Jewish, and she gets mad at me when I say that, but we do have... Seidenberg and Mueller and I'm trying to think of the oh Lair lineage the keepers may have been Jewish so I'm really looking into all that and people think oh you're just joking or you know my mom said this oh you're just trying to make everybody Jewish I mean give me a break I didn't expect that we were Jewish and I didn't incidentally well not incidentally but relatedly I um they were flashing over the camera during the Super Bowl and by the way, how long am I bored you? I'm just checking. Okay, I thought it was like 18 minutes, so I haven't bored you too badly. And I, when they, when they did one of the celebrity flashovers, first of all, was, unless I missed something, I'm surprised that they didn't flash over Harold Rivera. But back to the point that I was making about flashing over the, what do you call it, the camera. The camera. Okay, so they're flashing over the cameras on celebrities. They flashed over to my cousin, Michael Douglas. He is apparently a Danilovich cousin of some distant relationship. And someone here on YouTube, I remember, had asked once me after I showed Kirk or Granddad's death certificate, the copy that I have of it, they said, well, are you related to Kirk Douglas? And I said, no, because I didn't understand that Danilovich was actually originally his last name. I just thought it was a patronymic. Or I, maybe I had thought it was a last name before, but then I found out it was a patronymic, and then his last name was Dembski. Turns out that the Zarnecki chin is actually a Danilovich chin. We both come from what was Vilna Gobernia, and that's how the Androloviches and the Daniloviches stayed connected, because the Androloviches, okay, they went into Bose and Orlenek and Sivalki and... The Daniloviches went into Krasny and Bialystok and, what's that one, Ostrolenka and, I mean, even in Northumberland County in Pennsylvania especially, they stayed connected. And, by the way, the marriage certificate does apparently say something about um, Krasny. What, what does it say? I'm trying to read it real quick. It does use the names Antony and Katrazina and I'm trying to figure out, like, some of the words, though, because... One of the words may be something to do with um, the Mosaic religion or Moses or what have you. So I'm trying to find all that out right now and trying to get it translated. And he said, the, the cousin who sent me this said that the marriage certificate was from 1850. And I thought, geez, that would be early. But again, it wouldn't be a surprise because back then and still today in some Orthodox, well, ultra-Orthodox or Haredi circles, Kids do marry it around bar mitzvah and bar mitzvah age, so I'm trying to get the certificate translated right now. I can't read Polish for a lick. I mean, I mean, I can do some stuff, but 
I mean, and even even then they may still be Jewish, but we may become a null scene back then. And or, but then again, why, if we were Catholic back then, why would they be mad at us? Why wouldn't we be talking to each other? So, and also, I mean, they thought that the Andreloviches were Jewish back then too, because they sent a card to one of my cousins from the Jewish service board members or what have you so and I mean there was an Andrelevich or an Andrelevitz who identified as Jewish so it's like I gotta find out all that what that certificate means and I'm betting or at least I'm hoping it does say mosaic or I mean even if it doesn't we can at least see that we were a new scene back then although that that whole family is so messed up in a lot of ways and it's like I couldn't even make up I couldn't even make up this stuff if I tried. And this is not, trust me, this isn't the thing that I expected. And day to day, unfortunately, because I was raised not knowing that I'm Jewish and trying to navigate with my rediscovered identity, really my discovered identity, although I've been Jewish all along and just didn't know it. Um, so I guess you could say discovered or rediscovered or whatever. I have to struggle every day with, I mean, sometimes... I get just as self-hating as John Kerry can be, and apparently that guy is self-hating because I've seen headlines where John Kerry's saying, oh, we need to boycott Israel more, and people are understandably mad, and I'm going, how can a Cohen hate Israel so much? But he does. And it's just amazing. Oh, right, okay, so the Danilo bitching, the certificate thing, the... Just so much on my mind right now, and so much I could talk about. And speaking about talking about stuff... Oh, right. I've been boring you for 16 minutes, 50 seconds. As I said, I don't have my glasses on. I broke the nose pads on one of my glasses when I tried to get off the floor and then adjust the nose pad because it had been really bent and I ended up breaking it off and I just haven't had my glasses on since. And it's given me a whole new appreciation for what I can see with my glasses. And who knows, I may get LASIK, but... For lack of a better term, and I don't want to be insensitive because I'm disabled myself, but I don't know if I could handle being blind for a whole day, especially since I already have a disability that I have to deal with for my life, and apparently with LASIK surgery, you can be blind for a fair 24 hours or pretty long 24 hours, and I've just tried sometimes closing my eyes before to see what it would be like to not be able to see and have to walk, and for me, that just be really scary and I mean also let me see so if I had to ooh, that'd be really scary I mean I've been blessed I've been blessed not to have had other issues in terms of being blind or being deaf but in terms of being disabled in society I agree with a friend of mine that society has a long way to go because they did show the woman who was signing for the deaf people who could not hear the national anthem but the deaf community and the the blind community or the unable to see community and other communities of people with disabilities still are not respected. And I didn't even know that one of their football players was deaf until today. And it just goes to show you how much the disabled are still squared away, even in America. And we aren't much different from China because... In China, they abandon, they abandon their babies. How many times have you heard the horror stories of parents abandoning or abusing their disabled children? Heck, I mean, I even, I even, I remember one time getting into a fight with my dad because he didn't want me to wear my braces at night, and we argued over that. And I heard that my dad had apparently called our doctors quacks when they said, oh, you know, they're premature and you're going to have to take care of them and stuff. And, I mean, that would explain some things to me because as far as I know, my stepsisters are not disabled and so that makes sense as to why he would consider them more daughters than he would consider me and Michelle, especially since, you know, I especially have a disability. And <coughs> I'm sorry that it sucks, but we're we're disabled and... I also, by the way, have a disabled cousin, and so my my disabled cousin Jamie, I've talked about him before, 
And also, if you saw my blog entry recently, that's why I consider Stephen Colbert scum, because he was making fun of people who really do have mental, for lack of a better term, mental incapacitations or mental disabilities. And back to the whole thing about Jamie, Jamie and I, at least on Dad's dad's side, are the dirty little secret of the family. And, you know, because I talked about that in the blog entry, too, when I really look back in terms of great-grandma, she was, like, really the only one who, well, with the exception of Grand Uncle Jim, of course, because he has been a real saint to Jamie, and I talked about that story that I was told once I found out what the real story was, and I talked about that. And as I look back, I remember that great-grandma was really one of the ones that loved me and Jamie and loved the rest of her grandkids and great-grandkids, and I'm one of the great-grandkids, and just a lot to think about when you get to talking about these things, and anyway, though, not everyone in this, well, obviously not everyone in my family is like great-grandma Zarnecki, neither is society, and back to the thing about the society, I'm still trying to find a job, and I'm still trying to find what I have you, and I know it's going to be much harder for me because I am disabled, and People are going to look at that and say, and even one of the comments that I got on when I was doing the original interview video was that my disability was going to be a liability and all that, so it's still, it's still, you know, and that's why I said too, well, I, I, I might have said I wouldn't, let's see how long I bored you for. I'm going to try to wrap it up at the 25 minute mark just so I don't bore you, but a lot of this is just updates and what have you as well. And I know that it's going to be harder for me. And one of the comments I got is, oh, if you're too honest in the interview, you know, they're going to consider your disability a liability. And originally what I was going to do for the video when I was first making it is why I was saying, well, because I said, you know, well, if I wasn't honest, it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because, I mean, if I do get a miracle, if I do end up getting a job, if I do end up even becoming famous, which is what I would like, I would like to be a real person. I would like to be... I would like to be one of those people who can do like this and say, yeah, I have ADD, I have, I have depression, I have OCD and anxiety, and also I have cerebral palsy, so not only do I have some mental conditions, I also have a physical condition, and by the way, irritable bowel syndrome, because, well, I mean, the cerebral palsy could be a part of it, they could say, irritable bowel syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome affects the colon. The colon definitely has muscular properties to it because the colon, you have to push things through it and lo and behold, cerebral palsy can affect everything including the colon. So I'm sure in some ways irritable bowel syndrome is much worse for me than it is for other people. And also, I just, well back to the point, so I have the conditions and I'm obviously going to be like damned if I do, damned if I don't, I'm going to be a liability anyway, unfortunately, because of my disabilities, and that's how society tends to treat the disabled, even they could have mentioned that Donovan McMahon, or whatever his name is, I know his first name is Donovan, they, they could have mentioned that he is unable to hear, but they obviously didn't widely make that known, and it just goes to show you that I'm going to have a harder time, but that's exactly what I want to be in, especially if I do want to become famous, because I want to become real. I want to reach out to people. I want to tell my story, and I want them to tell their stories. And it's part of why I majored in political science and why I want to work as... I, I definitely could work and talk radio so far, because I could talk like a... whatever I'm talking, like like a talk show host or... Who have you, and how long have I been boring you for? Because I said I'm going to try to wrap this up. Okay, so I got, like, less than a minute, but still. I'm just hoping that if I do get a miracle, if I do get a job, even if I become famous, like a talk show host or a blogger or who have you, then maybe I can... Because, like I even said, and that's another thing, too. When I become famous, I don't want people to be afraid to say, hey, I might be related to you. Because, like I said, that I was related to someone once, and, you know, I definitely think that I still could be, because, let's face it, our families come from what was Vilna Gouvernia, and 
I had just said, I had made a joke about a picture that they were in, and then my sister said, well, you know, these two celebrities kind of look like Dad and Uncle Geary, and I was like, wow, I didn't notice that, and, you know, I was only joking with the picture, because they had cigars in their mouth, and I said, oh, and it's two of my uncles on my mom's side, because for whatever reason, occasionally when the Allen boys get together, they'll have a cigar or whatever, and, I mean, it's just what guys do, but... That was the whole joke about that, and then Michelle said, well, you know, these two look like Dad and Uncle Gary, and then I said something, and then I got into trouble with one of them, and I'm I'm going to be one of those people who's real, and I'm not going to be afraid to have, for lack of a better term, non-famous people or common people say, hey, I'm related to you, because, I mean, who knows, you might be, and you know what? I'm one of those who says, hey, if you think you might be related to me, Let's talk, or even if someone says, hey, I'm your, I'm your cousin's friend's, I'm your cousin's friend's brother on our mom's side, I, I'd want to talk and say, okay, which cousin, and, or even, for example, there are some families to whom I'm related to in more than one way, so I definitely want to talk about that, and that's part of why I want to become famous, because I want I want to be one of those real celebrities, you know, not the, someone said, I forget who said it, well, my mom said uh, a lot of it's phoniness and all that when we were seeing some of the celebrities on the red carpet today, and I promise not to bore you, but I think, you know, I just consider this like a podcast for 30 minutes, and again, I'm sorry for boring you, but boy, I could talk about so much, and, okay, so we were talking about, Oh, and I want to be one of those real celebrities, too. I want to be one of those people who, and someone said it, like, there was, someone said it on Twitter about, I think it was Martin Sheen when he was doing the Declaration of Independence reading and what have you, but they said, like, that there's so much plastic there and all that, and it was a reference to Sheen's politics and all that, and the, the point is, though, in terms of that Hollywood celebrity culture and that celebrity culture and who have you, I want to be different than everybody else. And I mean, even right now, you can see that I'm one of the, probably one of the least popular people on YouTube, because I do tend to try to be more real, and there are a lot of things that I won't do for fame. There are a lot of things that I, and sometimes I, as I've said before, I can be honest, well, as other people have said to me anyway, I can be honest to a fault, and... A lot of these celebrities aren't honest, even to any degree. And unfortunately, for example, we just saw the passing of Philip Seymour Hoffman, Brook Diana Met, and you know he was obviously hiding something because he continued to overdose on heroin. And apparently, from one, a quick headline that I saw, he was found with a needle in his arm and like just. So it's so sad. I want to be one of those celebrities and or one of those famous people who can be real and say, look, I want to be one of those to whom people can reach out and, you know, I want to be one of those who can reach down and, you know, so people don't have to be afraid and realize that, you know what, celebrities in the end are just normal people who, for whatever reason, have been exalted by God. And that's sad and well, and like I said, too, especially because, or if I didn't say it, then also another reason I had to become famous is because I'm disabled and I have the OCD and anxiety and the depression and the ADD and the irritable bowel syndrome as well, and then the cerebral palsy, and hey, if I don't get famous, I'm not going anywhere in society, unfortunately, so even if I didn't want to be famous, I wouldn't have a choice. I would just be... I I can only imagine what I would be. I'll put it that way. Anyway, that's let's see. Okay, um, we're almost at the thirty minute mark here. So sorry that I bored you long enough. By the way, I am job searching, and so far nothing has really come up. And well, what can I say? And what else can I say? And I'm just checking really quickly, checking my email to see if someone did translate the certificate for me. Nothing yet. And making sure that we're still recording here. And 
Okay, well, oh, here we go. We're about to hit it. Well, it hit the 30-second mark, I mean. So, four, three, two, one.